All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me for today's webinar. I am Dr. Dan Scheinman, Bird Conservation Director for Audubon, Arkansas. Uh, a lot of people know me as Dr. Dan the Birdman. I've been birding for about years, and I've been with <coughs> Audubon, Arkansas for 15 years now. And I love birds. It's my hobby, my career, my passion, and I enjoy sharing what I know about birds with others. So when it comes to Arkansas's birds, you may be surprised to know, let's get going. There's some technical difficulties, there we go. There are 422 species that have been recorded in Arkansas. So this begs many questions. How has Arkansas come to have so many species? Can you see all 422 species? Can you see them all in a year if you had the time and ability to travel all around? Well, the answer to those questions lies in understanding that Arkansas's bird community is a dynamic thing, that it depends on many different factors that I will go over in. And first, when it comes to understanding Arkansas's avifauna, our bird community, one of the big influences at a broad scale is our geography. We're located in what many people call the Mid-South. So, we have birds that are characteristic of, of all the regions around us. Species that are found in the southeastern United States. Species characteristic of Great Plains in the central U.S. We have many birds that are primarily found in the northeastern states and that make their home in the, the Great Lakes in the upper Midwest. A lot of these birds are also found in Arkansas. So a lot of these big geographic regions come together in our can add to our diversity. And then even within Arkansas, Arkansas itself is a diverse place. And it can be broken up into these major eco-regions. For example, there's the Delta in the eastern part of the state. You know, that's all, that has a, it's largely flat, it's a lot of agriculture, bottomland hardwood forests. Of course, we have the Ozarks in the northern part of the state, largely hilly, mountainous terrain, forested. There's the Gulf Coastal Plain in the south that's pretty flat and is mostly dominated by pines. These major areas have distinctive and major habitat types that help to influence what kinds of birds are found there. And then even within each of these eco-regions of our state, there are multiple habitat types. And there are many species that are found in one or multiple types of habitats. Some birds are generalists and they're found in that wide variety of habitats. And some are specialists and found in only one kind of habitat. And I'll give you some examples of birds that are characteristic of these different types of habitats. And I'll show you a generalist and a specialist. So we have many different forest types in Arkansas. But one that I especially love is there are bottomland hardwood forests where it's dominated by cypress, tupelo, oaks. It's flooded for part of the year. And our bottomland hardwood forests are home to a variety of great species, one of which has just recently arrived back in the state, the beautiful prothonotary warbler, also known as the swamp canary, because it's found in bottomland swamps as well as along rivers and lakes and any wooded wet area. <clears throat> but they do indeed have this beautiful, sweet song. Sweet, 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 sweet. And prothonotary warblers are unique among the warblers in that nesting in a cup nest in a tree or a shrub or on the ground, they actually nest in tree cavities, as well as nest boxes and other cavities where they can cram into. And generally, these cavities are over standing or moving water. 
Another denizen of our swamps is the Swainson's warbler. You can tell this bird is a lot more drab. It's a lot harder to see, not only because it's drab, but because it really loves dense, tangled vegetation, especially in cane breaks, where you oftentimes will hear it before you see it, or you'll hear it and you just cannot find this bird in the dense cover. It doesn't help that it sounds a lot like a Louisiana water thrush, so that you can be confused by voice alone. So this bird is very cryptic. They make their nests in these dense tangles, and uh, I, my hat's off to those people who try to study the biology of these species. That's where that bird is. You can just see the, the female sitting on her nest there. But you could easily walk right by, by that and not see her at all. Another cool forest type we have in Arkansas are pine forests. And I don't mean the dense pine locations. I mean mature, open pine forests, ones where the trees are spread apart, uh, there's a lot of light that reaches the understory, and a lot of grasses and shrubs and flowers in that understory. The kind of forest that's maintained by regular prescribed burns. Kind of place that's managed for one particular species that's totally dependent on this type of mature pine forest, and that is the endangered red cockaded woodpecker. Yeah, I know it looks a lot like the downy woodpecker, but this is not a backyard bird. Note that this bird has a solid black back with white stripes. It doesn't have the white patch in the back like the downy woodpecker has. So you're not going to find this bird in a backyard, even if you live in pine areas. Species like mature pine forests with regular burns. Uh, unique among woodpeckers is that they actually nest in live trees that are infected with a heart rot fungus that makes it the wood softer. It still takes them a long time to carve a cavity, but they do it in that living tree. But they also they can be helped by installing artificial nest boxes. And that's one of the things that conservation organizations, Arkansas Natural Heritage does, to help the species. And all of the red cockaded woodpeckers or RCWs are all found, mostly found in public land, some on private land, but all in places that are managed for this. And then management for this species helps a variety of other pine birds. Uh, first of all, here's the call of the red cockaded woodpecker. They are adorable, personable birds. You want to find them, you've got to go to where they're being managed for and generally helps to uh, hang out near a known colony and wait for sundown for the birds to come back to their boxes and their holes where they roost for the night. Then there's another pine specialist is the brown-headed nuthatch, but they they're a lot more tolerant. They, they can actually live in our suburban and urban areas where there's just scattered pine trees around, although they also love it in more mature uh, wild habitats. These can be backyard birds if you've got pines around, and they also have a very squeaky sound that I love. I like a doggy chew toy being shaken around. They're feisty birds too. They will defend their territory. Grasslands, prairies, habitat near and dear to my heart. I study grassland birds for my master's and PhD projects. Uh, these are places dominated by grasses, of course, as well as wildflowers. One species that occupies grasslands is the dick sissel. They're a fairly widespread, adaptable bird. They also can nest in some agricultural fields. And they're named for their sound. It sounds like dick, dick, sissel. Then another grassland bird that's a very, it's a habitat specialist is the Henslow sparrow. 
Fix the soles now. When they're around, you're going to know because they will perch up on wires and they'll sing their hearts out. The Henslow sparrows are very secretive little birds. They nest in mature grasslands, primarily north of Arkansas, but they winter in Arkansas in some specific places. And they're prairie birds, but in Arkansas, they tend to winter in these grasslands that are not really prairies, but they're barrens. So the soil is poor. It it's, uh, can be kind of saline soil. So woody plants can't grow there. Only some grasses can grow there. And Henslow sparrows hang out in those grasses, like certain places in uh, Kingsland Prairie Natural Area and Warren Prairie Natural Area in the southern part of the state. Those are good places for Henslow sparrows in the winter. They're not musical at all. They just click. Shrublands, that's at the intersection between grasslands and woodlands, dominated by dense shrubby habitat. There's some birds that love to nest in shrubs. One of those is the indigo bunting. Although indigo buntings are habitat generalists and they can live in the shrublands, but just as easily move out and feed in the prairies, as well as go feed adjacent woodlands. Indigo buntings have a song that's a series of paired notes given emphatically. Sweet, sweet, choot, choot, wheat, wheat. One way to remember that is fire, fire, where, where, here, here, see it, see it. We are here, here, see it, see it. <laughs> and then another shrubland bird, the indigo bunting's even more beautiful cousin is the painted bunting, perhaps the most gaudily colored bird in North America. Definitely a shrubland bird. Uh, they can be a backyard feeder bird if you happen to live in one's territory, in just the right area. Otherwise, you've got to kind of go out to the countryside to find this species. And you, they're fairly common in the Arkansas River Valley, somewhat in the uh, Ozark Plateau region, and somewhat in the Delta as well. Their song is a sweet musical warble. Wetlands, these are places that are dominated by herbaceous vegetation and they have standing water at some parts of the year or all year round. And there are a variety of wetland birds that live in Arkansas. One of those is the enigmatic American bittern. The bittern is a member of the heron and egret family and these are shy, secretive marsh birds. They're really hard to see. You can tell that they are well camouflaged for living in that dense grassy habitat. And they take it a step further too, because if the wind is blowing the grasses around, the bird will also sway back and forth as if, as if it's just a reed in the wind. One of the colloquial names of the American bittern is thunder pumper for its loud booming voice. <laughs> They make that sound by taking in air, gulping air from the air sac, and that helps to resonate their sound. It can carry for miles. Although you're probably not likely to hear that in Arkansas because they winter here, they don't breed here. Another inhabitant of our marshes is the aptly named marsh wren, another winter visitor in our marsh habitats, and they have a a fast kind of warbling sound. Sometimes they'll sing in winter. Open water habitats, our rivers, lakes, reservoirs. This is where you find a variety of water birds. They tend to be large bodied birds like American white pelicans that can be found all across the state on our large water bodies. 
flying around looking for food. Uh, occasionally you'll find some pelicans that are here in the summertime, but they don't breed here. They actually breed islands on freshwater lakes in the northern Great Plains of the US and in Canada. These are really are freshwater birds, not saltwater birds like their cousin, the brown pelican. Gulls and terns are also big water bodies. Some of them are common, like the ring-billed gull. Some are rare and endangered, like the least tern that nests on sandbars along the Arkansas, Mississippi, and Red Rivers. Agricultural fields. Now, for the most part, row crops are not good bird habitat. They tend to be bird poor. Of all the row crop types, rice does tend to be the most bird friendly because of its water. Rice needs water and water birds need water. So there's a bunch of birds that will live in rice fields. Sometimes they'll nest in rice fields or they'll nest in the adjacent ditches and then move their young into rice fields to feed like king rails do. And if there's one bird that's really benefited from agriculture, that's the horned lark. These birds like to <clears throat> nest and uh, live in areas of short, sparse grass. So they're right at home in plowed fields, overgrazed pastures, row crop, they'll nest in soybean fields and that kind of thing. So they're really common anywhere we have large expanses of row crop habitat or grazed areas. One of my breeding bird surveys I do is in the kind of Forest City Hughes area. It's a lot of row crop, not very exciting bird wise, but I do love to hear the horn lark singing in the morning. Our urban areas too can be home to a variety of birds. Uh, that have moved in and made their homes in our cities. <clears throat> One of those that has adapted to living among us is the peregrine falcon. Historically, peregrine falcons nested on cliffs. Uh, so they're kind of right at home on our skyscrapers and our bridges. Now, there, there hasn't been a peregrine falcon pair nesting in Arkansas for decades. They did have their populations kind of decimated due to DDT. They have come back, but they just haven't started nesting in Arkansas in recent times. But occasionally you'll see them, uh, well, in a lot of open areas, they'll be hunting waterfowl and other birds, but sometimes they'll be in Little Rock, for example, and go after pigeons. So another raptor that's right at home in our suburban places is the Mississippi kite. They primarily like bottomland hardwood forests, but now they've started nesting in the trees in our green spaces. So they have been able to expand their range north and eastwards because they have adapted. Actually, it was just a few years ago that they first, the first nest was found in Fayetteville, and now they're a regular nester in Fayetteville. So they're moving pretty fast. And they're very common where I am in Little Rock and in many urban areas, you can find them. I love seeing them fly around. And they're just starting to arrive back in Arkansas. Beautiful birds, so graceful. So as I've kind of already hinted, different birds are found in Arkansas at different times of the year. Some of course are here all year round, some in the breeding season, some in the winter, and some just pass through during migration. So permanent residents, they should be birds that are familiar to you. Common backyard birds tend to also be permanent resident birds. Like the Carolina wren, our most abundant wren, widespread, found in a variety of habitats, perfectly at home in our backyards, and notorious for nesting in and around our homes in any place where they can shove some leaves and twigs into, they will nest, whether it's in a box or a flower pot or the pocket of clothing hanging on a drying line or in the photo here, shoes in a garage. 
Sometimes it's your barbecue grill or the grill of your car. <laughs> they nest anywhere that they can. Another song is quite variable, but always rolling. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. Another common backyard bird, permanent resident, our most widespread woodpecker, the red belly woodpecker. It does have some red belly, but the most obvious feature is the red on the head. It goes from the nape to the forehead on the male, just on the nape on the female. And then also note the black and white zebra stripes on the back. Herons and egrets tend to be primarily breeding birds in Arkansas. There are a few like the great blue heron that are here year round, but we get the most of them, most species, greatest number of individuals in the breeding season where they'll nest in big colonies in trees above water. Warblers also primarily are here in the breeding season. Some of them are here year round, but mostly we get them in the summertime, like the uh, black throated green warbler. They're just starting to arrive in the state. I heard my first one yesterday. And there's the yellow warbler that says, sweet, 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 I'm so sweet. Sweet, 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 I'm so sweet. Nut sided warbler. Nice to meet you. Please, 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 to meet you or CCC Miss Beecher. And that other one was the American Red Start, which is CCCCO. Waterfowl. Primarily winter residents in the state, occupying uh, all their large bodies of water, sewage ponds, a uh, variety of, of water habitats. That's where waterfowl are found. <clears throat> and sparrows also are largely a winter phenomenon here. Although some birds like the white-throated sparrow will stick around all the way through mid-May before they migrate to their northern breeding ground. And right now, there are a whole lot of birds that are migrating north for spring migration. It's a wonderful time of year to be birding. There are some that just pass through Arkansas. Mostly, most of our shorebirds just stop by for a short time on their long migrations between South America and their northern breeding grounds in the northern U.S. and all the way up to the Arctic. And when they come through, they need shallow water and mudflat habitats. Lake margins, drain fish ponds, those sorts of things are critically important. Or uh, uh, shallow water areas managed for them, like at Bald Knob National Wildlife Refuge. Real critical stopover habitat for a variety of shorebird species. Then the, the lovely rose-breasted grosbeak is here for just a few weeks in the summer and a few weeks in the fall as they're migrating through. Uh, so by the end of April is when we will expect to see rose-breasted grosbeaks return to the state. So another way that birds end up in Arkansas and on our list is through range expansion, well, through the movement of the birds themselves. And there's a variety of ways that that happens. One is through range expansion, and that can be through introductions by humans or natural range expansion. So there are a few species that have been introduced to Arkansas and the, the United States. One of those is, of course, the rock pigeon, 
which has been here for a long time, is essentially a naturalized bird. Another one is the Eurasian collared dove. Looks something like a mooring dove. Notice the different shade of brown. Notice the square tip tail, not the pointy tail of a mourning dove, and the white and black stripe on the back of the neck, the collar, and the collar dove. This species was introduced to the Caribbean, I believe, and then from there escaped and expanded. It reached Florida, kept on going. First ones in Arkansas were found in 1987. Now it's found across the entire state of Arkansas, mostly in our urban areas, and is continuing to spread. A few years ago, I saw one of these birds in upstate New York, which is still out of range, but shows they're expanding. And Eurasian collared doves have a real monotonous sound. Pretty, but they are monotonous. And they also give a loud scream like a ha, which can be startling when you first hear it. A species that has expanded, expanded its range naturally is the black belly whistling duck. It was only just a few decades ago that the species in the US was just found in southern Texas. This is a common bird in Mexico and Point South, but it expanded in Texas and then continued to expand, and now is found throughout Arkansas, especially in open areas, the Delta, the River Valley, and they are nesting in Arkansas. And you'll see pairs on ponds with huge broods. And this is another bird that I have also seen in upstate New York, far from where it belongs. And then sometimes, unfortunately, we lose species in Arkansas due to range collapse. They can disappear here, but still be somewhere else or disappear entirely. An example of an extirpated bird is the greater prairie chicken, which used to occupy the prairies of Arkansas. But when people moved in and started to tear up the prairies and replace it with agriculture, well, there just wasn't enough room left for greater prairie chickens, and they have disappeared from the state. Now, maybe someday we can restore enough prairie to reintroduce the species, but for now, that is still a dream that's a long ways away. But we're working on it, especially in the Grand Prairie of Eastern Arkansas. And some species are gone for good. They are extinct to the world. One especially sad case is the passenger pigeon, which at one time used to be the most abundant bird on the planet, numbering in the billions with early explorers talking about flocks that would take hours or days to pass overhead, that would blacken the sun, and that would weigh down and break tree limbs with the sheer weight of their colonies. And then they were hunted out, overhunted for no good reason, they, their old growth forests taken down and now they are gone. It's a real lesson that we, just because a bird is common doesn't mean it can't disappear. And then sometimes birds end up in Arkansas for somewhat random reasons, unpredictable, I should say. These are birds that we refer to as vagrants or we use the term rare bird, which doesn't mean rare as in threatened or endangered, but means rarely occurs. For example, Say's species. This is a species that <clears throat> it lives primarily to the west of Arkansas. Winters you know, in, in um, Alaska and the Great Plains, Central Valley area, and it winters down in Mexico. And you can imagine if a migrating bird was say starting in Alaska and its internal compass was just a few degrees off, it could pretty easily end up in Arkansas in Southern Texas and spend the winter in Arkansas. And indeed that happens from time to time, someone will find a safe Phoebe wintering in Arkansas. In fact, uh, I'm not sure if it's there right now, but there was recently one found in Eastern Arkansas 
and it was right across the street from a vermilion flycatcher, which is a similar example to the Sayes Phoebe. Sometimes birds just get the wanderlust and wander outside their territory. A good example, well, many hummingbirds, but especially the broad-billed hummingbird, not really a migratory bird. It's a bird that in the U.S. is primarily found in southeastern Arizona, southwestern Mexico, but occasionally birds, for whatever reason, decide to head off on their own, try to make their way in the world, find some new territory to occupy, and end up way out of range, especially along the southern tier of states. But it wasn't until winter of 2005, 2006, that Arkansas finally got its first broad-billed hummingbird, a bird that hung out in Whitehall, north of Pine Bluff. And then, when news of that bird broke, the birders descended on the house, the host that, that had that hummingbird. I was there too. The day after news broke, birders came from all over the state to gather at the feeder and watch that broadbill hummingbird come in. It was quite exciting. And then, lo and behold, second winter record, the winter of 2008, 2009, hanging out at a, a bird watcher's feeder in Conway. And then, whoa, our third state record, 2017, in Arkadelphia, hung out for just three days, so not a lot of people got to see that one. Will the next broad-billed hummingbird occur in Arkansas? I have no idea. Sometimes major weather systems move birds, especially hurricanes. For example, if a hurricane sweeps through the Gulf of Mexico and makes land, it can sweep up seabirds in its path. And then when the hurricane breaks up, those seabirds are deposited far inland from where they would otherwise be. And that's the case for birds like the Magnificent Frigate Bird that I got to see in southwestern Arkansas after a hurricane that fortunately broke up just over Millwood Lake. When that hurricane came, that was uh, Hurricane uh, Ivan, I believe, I stationed myself in Millwood Lake during the hurricane, hoping to see a seabird. And indeed, Magnificent Frigate Bird was the bird. And then sometimes I have no idea why a bird shows up. And much to everybody's surprise, another seabird, a brown booby, showed up on Lake Norrell in Saline County in 2012, August 2012, not associated with any weather event. And this was just the start of what, what came to be a whole like bunch of inland brown booby records all across the eastern United States. And since then, we've had nine brown booby records in various large bodies of water around the state. And right now, I don't know if anyone knows why that's happening, what's going on. Uh, to summarize, to answer the questions, how has Arkansas come to have so many birds? Well, that's due to the dynamic nature of Arkansas's geography, our habitats, the season, and the movement of the birds themselves. And you see all 422 species? Well, unfortunately, no, because some of those are extinct or extirpated. Some of those were rare birds who had one record in all time and another one may never show up in the state. Uh, but you can certainly increase the number of birds that you see in Arkansas, see more bird species by traveling around the state, visiting different areas, visiting different habitats in different times of the year. That's the way you increase your state list of birds. And sometimes just being lucky and being in the right place at the right time to find that rare bird. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time and attention, and I will go to the chat to try to answer some of your questions. Sorry about the sound issues, folks. 
Any questions? Also, if you um, want to know what species have been seen in the state and when expected, there is the official state checklist of Arkansas birds that can be found on the Arkansas birds website. That's arbirds.org. Arbirds.org is the official, has the official state checklist of Arkansas birds. I recommend every birder have that. Ivy Bill Woodpecker still sought after? Uh, no, as far as I know, no one is looking for it. There's certainly no official search for it. Uh, a concerted effort was made to try and find it. We didn't find the absolute proof that was needed, but a lot of good conservation work was done in the name of the Ivory Bill and the birding world's attention turned to Arkansas because of that. And now a lot of birders come here to see the birds that we do have here on a regular basis. Oh, wings over Arkansas. Someone reminded me to mention that. Arkansas Game and Fish Commission has a program called Wings Over Arkansas. You get a pin uh, and certificate when you see a certain number of birds. So 25 birds is the chickadee level. Uh, 300 birds is the swallowtail kite level. So it's kind of a fun way to encourage you to go out and see more species and it's free. Go to Game and Fish Commission's website for more information. Should a yard have more than one bluebird box? Well, if you have enough room, you can put one, more than one box up there. I, I don't know the guidance for spacing bluebird boxes off the top of my head, but you can certainly find that online. But if the boxes are too close together, one bluebird will dominate both boxes and keep another pair from nesting in them. What's the rarest bird in Arkansas? <clears throat> oh, that's a, is it? the rarest one that uh, occurs regularly. That may be, that might be the red cockaded woodpecker for its low population size, permanent resident, small number of birds, endangered species. Can birds fly if they lose some feathers? Well, yes, yes. Uh, I mean, if they lose a whole bunch of feathers, they might be hampered, but I've certainly seen morning doves flying around without a tail, cardinals flying around without a tail. And if a bird loses its feathers prematurely, then it will, molt in new feathers pretty quickly to replace the lost ones. Where do ruby-throated hummingbirds live? Well, they nest in forested areas. They build their nests in trees. So to have a hummingbird nesting in your neighborhood, you've got to have trees around and you got to have enough trees for the birds to live in. So they're kind of like forested areas. And the closer you live to a forested area, the more likely you are to have a nesting ground or to have many birds whose territories may overlap with your area, your feeders. If you live in just a very suburban area, area with fewer trees, you will get plenty of birds during migration, but not as many during the breeding season. The biggest bird ever, uh, I believe that would be the trumpeter swan which is also one of the, maybe is the heaviest flying bird in North America. And pelicans are pretty darn big too. The biggest bird I have seen, uh, that is probably the Andean condor that I saw in Colombia last year. Someone asked about a dicamba update. I'm not going to get into that right now, but if you go to ar.audubon.org slash dicamba, you can learn more about the latest on dicamba, which is an herbicide that is threatening bird habitat. How big was it? It was so big. I once saw a bird this big. Uh, What's the wingspan of an Andean condor? That is a great question. I would have to cheat to figure that one out.
any birds that I'm worried about uh, going extinct in Arkansas? Hmm. Well, hmm. <clears throat> well, a whole lot of, of our birds are in danger of extinction due to climate change. Uh, a study done by National Audubon last year found that uh, there are 360, 369 species on the brink of extinction in the future due to global warming. They're going to lose a significant portion of their range. That's a major threat for those birds. There's at least 22, 23 bird species in Arkansas that are going to lose a significant or all of their Arkansas range in the future under a warming, wing, warming conditions. In fact, Andean condor, 10 foot wingspan. Thank you. Do Oreos stay in the state? Sometimes, yes. Uh, Occasionally, we have a Baltimore Oriole that spends the winter in Arkansas. There is at least one that's in the greater Memphis area right now. <clears throat> have you seen a trumpeter swan and what do they sound like? Uh, well, I have seen trumpeter swans. They're pretty widespread in the state now. Another good conservation story. Uh, this lake near Heber Springs is a great place to see trumpeter swans. And let me see, I can play a trumpeter swan for you. Come on, come on, app. There we go. Trumpeter swans sound like. See. Oh yes, the, this photo here that you see in this question slide is a great horned owl. Are there any species that breed exclusively in Arkansas? No, we don't have any birds that are endemic to Arkansas. But there are a few species that are endemic to the United States that are found in Arkansas, like the Backman sparrow and cockaded woodpecker. Any thoughts on building chimney swift housing? So you can build a tower for chimney swifts. Plans online, there's a whole book about how to build towers for chimney swifts, and they should generally be placed in an open area. How many birds I've seen? Well, I've seen 363 out of Arkansas's 422 species. And I've seen over 1,700 species in the world. <clears throat> uh, favorite app to help with identification? Yes, a great free app to help with bird ID is called Merlin, kind of like the wizard, but named for the falcon. But Merlin is a bird ID wizard. It's a free app from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and you answer a series of questions about the bird, the size, the color, the habitat, and based on that, plus your location and the time of year that it gets from your phone, it will give you a short list of species to choose from. And then you can explore more about the birds to confirm the And then also Merlin has a photo identification ability too, which is pretty darn cool. A recommendation to keep raptors from attacking free-range chickens. I am sorry, I do not have that expertise. What's the smallest bird in Arkansas? <laughs> What's the greenest bird in Arkansas? My goodness, interesting questions. The smallest bird in Arkansas is going to be the ruby-throated hummingbird. And the greenest bird uh, well, that would probably be the female painted bunting. She is various shades of green.
Any other questions? Well, all right. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you and uh, stay tuned for tomorrow night's webinar, The Nightlife of Birds at 7 p.m. Central. That one may also be live streamed on National Audubon's Facebook page. More to come.